Join Twins K.N. Olu Taiwu, featured authors and speakers at the Vision, Identity, and Purpose seminars. Receive keys that will unlock the door to your discovery of purpose. This is your date with destiny. Welcome to the Vision Guided Life. I'm Olu Taiwo. I'm here with my brother Kay Taiwo. Thank you for tuning in. We have a very powerful program today. I believe it's going to really bless your life. At this point, like we usually say, call a friend and set your DVR. Kay, what do you have to say about it's today's message? It's a very message? powerful program today. And we're going to be talking today about time and seasons. And there's so much that we can say about this subject, but for time, <laughs> we're going to actually cover two principles about time and season. And time is so critical. Yes, it is. In some cases, time can be a matter of life or death. That's true. For example, uh, there was a man that went to his doctor after a checkup for a follow-up. And the doctor called, in, called him and uh, said, come in. It was a very urgent tone in his voice. He says, I have bad news and I have worse news. Which do you want to hear first? <laughs> so the man thought to himself, I guess I hear the bad news first. He says, you have 24 hours left to live. And the man got up and started pacing around the room. 24 hours, what could be worse than that? I, have to, I haven't put my, order, my life and everything in order before I leave. He said, okay, tell me what could be worse than 24 hours left to live. The doctor said, I was supposed to tell you that yesterday, but I forgot. <laughs> so the thing is, the whole point of that story is that timing is critical. Yes, it is. It's critical. And many times, it, that's a very, very maybe exaggerated type of uh, story in the sense that it's, it's not every situation we face is of that dire you know, consequence. But many times, uh, many people are living in a perpetual pause mode. They are not really stepping out and doing what God has for them. Or they put it off. And they put it off because there's always this assumption that there's always time. There's always time. But the way we kind of look at time many times, we look at it as a clock that we look on the wall or watch mm. that we wear. But time really is not in a, in a cyclical way like that only. There's also a linear aspect to time. It's like the uh, hourglass, really, yes. that once the sand runs out, that's the end of it. Life is a hyphen between two numbers, someone said. In other words, there's a time that we check into life and there's a time that we exit. The time that we're born and the time that we die. And in between the time of birth and death, that's that hyphen. Yes. And that represents figurative of, of our lives. And what we feel from the time we're born to the time we die, that's how we're going to remember. That's the impact we're going to make on the world. And so time is such a very important topic to discuss. And oftentimes I'm amused at the, the definition that I found. And I've read it a long time ago, but I, I still remember it because it amused me when I read it. And it says that time is a non-spatial continuum that goes from past, present, to future. Does that make any sense to you? Not no. To that, I'll, I'll repeat that. Yeah. Time is a non-spatial continuum that goes from past, present, to future. Now, that doesn't make any sense to any average person, right? But we can make time more meaningful by the events that we schedule. schedule and that's how people live yes. their lives. They remember a certain time in history based on the things that they filled their lives as events during those times. Is there something you would like to add to what, that? What is powerful, we've, we've said this to, in the past before also, that only living people can make history. Yes, dead, dead people are history. history. Yes. So we, we are still, uh, the, the script is still unfolding to us Absolutely. as we're walking in our destiny because yes. a lot of people waste their lives yes. thinking they have all the time in the world. Yes. But you can think back at people we read in history. At one point, they, they, were, they lived, yes. they had the same 24 hours, True. and they filled those 24 hours with significant events yes. that have impacted lives yes. even to, to yes. today. We have beneficiaries of their contribution. Absolutely. The question is, who will be the beneficiaries of our contribution? contributions? How yes. we schedule our time. Yes. Yes. In fact, the Bible tells us in Psalm 90, yes. teach, teach us, us to, to number, number our, our days. days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Yes. Because when you think you have forever, you have the tendency to put everything, everything off. off. Yes. But once you know that you have a limited time in this space yes. called earth, Absolutely. then you are more conscious of how you use your yes. time 
for the glory of your God. Your sense of stewardship is at a different yes, level. Yes, yes. And it's interesting. Many times people, when they think about uh, time and putting things on, on, on hold, they don't think that in many ways they are connected, vitally connected to someone else. That's true. And what they do impacts someone else. We don't live in a vacuum. Uh, yes, we don't live in a vacuum. I'm thinking of the case of John the Baptist. What John the Baptist did with his time had a consequence of what how it, Jesus was prepared to take on, uh, come on the scene and do his ministry. That's so, true. you see, John had to play his role and set the path straight for the Messiah to come, you see. And what Jesus did on the cross is what we are beneficiaries of today. That's true. So, what we do with our time can be of eternal consequence. And there are other dimensions to time that we have to look at because there are two types of time in, in, the, in the Bible. There's a time that we uh, refer to as chronos, and that's what we generally are used to. Chronological time. Chronological time about is where we use our clocks, our, our calendars yes. to measure time. Then there's another time called kairos, and this is, we see this come up in the Bible, which talks about a season or an opportunity. That's very key. All human beings live in the chronos, yes. the day-to-day, -day, in and out, but very few live in the kairos, the opportune seasons and moments of life. And so this whole message on time is so critical that we open our minds to the fact that while we, uh, are, we look at things as just passive, as abstract, just like that non-spatial continuum, sort of that's how people look at life. That's why it's, it's not something they view as consequential and they put things off. But if they saw the value for time, they would take inventory, teach us, the Bible says, like you said, to number our days. I want you to put this in, in perspective, in the in sense of a context of, say uh, God one day told you exactly how many years you would live. You will live life very differently. Very differently. If every, you do exactly the number of So the Bible says, <laughs> yes. teach us to, to number, number our days. days so that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Because if you saw the value and the length of time there's a, it puts on a different perspective on how you yes. live your life. I, I like you to put it this way also, that we live in time, but yes. we have eternity, eternity in, our hearts. in our hearts. Yes. I'll repeat that again. Yes. We live in time, but we have eternity in our hearts. In fact, the Bible tells us that he set eternity, eternity in our hearts. Us. So while we are living in time, yes. this, this encapsulation called yes. time, there's coming a time when the time will run out. Absolutely. Is, is now, what we've done here will determine the yes. next phase of That's our true. existence That's and eternity. True. So it's very important that we make this time count. Yes. That we leave our own mark. Yes. That cannot Absolutely. be erased. Absolutely. And that's why that very, the very principles of Kairos and Kronos are so critical. Because people are just clocking in, clocking out, doing their different you know, activities but not really taking inventory of God-given opportunities. Yes. In fact, there's a scripture that says, I want to I read the scripture. In fact, the first principle of time uh, we're covering here is that time is opportunity. Time is opportunity. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17, KJV Bible, it says, See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Where, wherefore, by ye, uh, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So you see right there that we're supposed to take good inventory, walk circumspectly. In other words, take a, not just a narrow view of life, but take it all in and see what is the value that God wants us, to, what impact does God want us to have on our world, the world around us. And we've often said that impact is, is, is seen even after the object leaves the place where it's made the impact. So for example, we talk about war zone. It, many times you don't see the war take place, yes. but you see the aftermath the of the aftermath. war yes. based on the damage. I mean, that's in the history made. channel. Yes. You're watching the history channel. In some cases, you don't even see the actual war footage. Yes. 
but you see the aftermath. Yes. And you look around you and yes. you, you yes. have to conclude something devastating, Happened something here. consequential took place here. Even though you didn't witness yes. the war itself, it has left its mark. Yes. And every day of our lives, we're leaving marks, yes. whether we realize it or not, either right. by default or by on purpose. Yes. The question is, the choice is really ours. Yes, The is. choice is really ours. It really is ours. I want to read this quote by uh, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Uh, He's he lived a long time ago, 1895 to 1979. It says, every moment comes to you pregnant with a divine purpose, time being so precious that God deals it out only second by second. Once it leaves your hands and your power to do with it as you please, it plunges into eternity to remain forever what you made it. That is so powerful. Yes. Please. Once it's in your hands, you read that's it when again. you have stewardship. Read it, again. Read it, it says, again. every moment comes to you pregnant with a divine purpose, time being so precious that God deals it out only second by second. Once it leaves your hands and your power to do with it as you please, it plunges into eternity to remain forever what you made it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so time really is elusive. That's one thing we have. That's actually one of the principles of time is elusive. You don't always have those opportunities. You have to take advantage of the opportunities you mm -hmm. have. And that's why the Bible also talks about time and chance. The yes. race is not given to the swift, nor the battle yeah. to the strong. Time, time and, and chance, chance happens, happens to them all. all. Yes. The thing is, do we recognize those chances, those opportunities that we have? Yes, so time is opportunity. When you yes. see it that way, it changes your perspective. Absolutely. When you see that time, and, and you know what, what I find interesting about time? Time is no respecter of persons. It's not a respecter of persons. The rich man, yes. the poor man, yes. the middle class, yes. everybody has 24 hours. That's right. At least from the perspective of the chronos. Yes. But it's how we position ourselves in the chronological time, how we spend our time prepares us yes. for the kairos moments, would you Absolutely. say? Absolutely. And that takes us actually to the second uh, principle of time, that time governs seasons. Time governs seasons. What you do daily determines what you become permanently. Many times people are not prepared for their seasons of opportunities because they, don't, they are not good stewards of their general yes. use of time. Now yes. think about uh, someone that runs in an, in an Olympics. How often does an Olympic uh, event every take four place? Years. Every four years. You don't just show up <laughs> to, to the track to run having not done any practice any toil in the last four years. Yes. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's a daily routine daily. that you maintain that prepares you for that moment when all the lime, you're in the, in the limelight and the cameras are rolling. The, the performance, if you perform well or you perform badly, has a lot to do what you've done over a period of time. And so I say time governs seasons. Seasons yeah. are moments in time but how well we're prepared for our season is determined by what our general value and stewardship of time. You know what I find interesting about what you just said? In an Olympic type of situation, it's very, very short period of time where you do, yes. you do the preliminaries and then you get to the final and then yes. run for gold. Yes. So that's in one speck of time compared to the four years that preceded it. In those four years, you had to wake up yes. when, when nobody was uh, yes. prodding you. Yes. There were no cameras nobody when you went on the track. Yes. Nobody saw you, the pain you went through, the dietary changes yes. you went through, the exercises in, in the gym. Mm. I mean, those were moments where it seems there's no appreciation. But those moments mm. are so significant Absolutely. that it can impact, they will impact yes. your performance on the stage True. in that phase of time. True. So that what you're saying is that time... And seasons, they, they, they go hand in hand. Hand in hand, yes. yes. And then there's a tendency for people to look at a major opportunity or season as though, wow, that's so spectacular and they don't know what to do. But the tr truth is, how well we're prepared. Look at Goliath and David. That was a season on, of opportunity. There was this threat to Israel yes. that all the soldiers were afraid to address. David comes around because he comes to see his brothers, to see their welfare, because it was sent by his father. So he saw, he heard the threat mm. from Goliath, and he heard the promise from the king, yes. King Saul. Yes. 
But guess what? The David, what did, what did David use? He used a sling, a slingshot. That same slingshot was what he used as a shepherd boy. Daily. Daily. That was daily. his daily routine. But now he faces a season or a moment of opportunity. And he was, it didn't just happen. He didn't just pick up a sling and try it out. Yes. At that most critical point. No. His daily routine impacted that season. So time governs seasons. And sometimes people tend to want to reverse it. Many times you'll see people that they're not good with the general principles. True. And they'll even quote scriptures. They'll say as if they have a sort of kind of like a magical thinking, yes. not going through a process. It's yes. like somebody pointing to the uh, wall of Jericho falling down yes. and, and saying that for every a problem you have, you have to approach it that same way. But God had a specific word yes. in that time and exactly. season that you never see repeated again in the yes. Bible. Yes. So it's very important that even the daily practice of spending time with God, mm -hmm. getting to know His mind, yes. and then taking the time. But He Himself said, redeeming the time because the, the days, days are, are evil. evil. Yes. So which means also there's a competition for time. Absolutely. In fact, I, would, I like to say often that our only true competitor is time. Not people, but time. Why? Because time is running out. That's true. So it's a, you see the, the words that we, we've heard, we say it's a race against time. Yes, mm -hmm. it really is a race, a against, race time. against time. Time is our competitor. And so the more impact we're going to make is, is based on how we value time. The less impact we make is also about how we manage our time. Yes. So you can, you can look at a person's life and really, you can kind of see if they've used their time. You can spend a day with a person and yes. see how they use their time. You yes. can pretty much yes. a, kind window of, into, a window into yes. where they're going by yes. how they use their time. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So um, at this point, we want to have a special message for you. Please stay tuned. We want to thank God for all our partners who have supported us through uh, this ministry and getting this message out. I want to encourage you at this point to, for those of you who have watched but want to become partners, you want to know more about this ministry, we want to encourage you to call 1-844-334-2197. Again, that's 1-844-334-2197. That's a toll-free number. You can call and become a partner, and you will see that your, your partnership goes a long way in helping us with this message. And everyone that becomes a partner today, we're going to, as a, our way of saying thank you, we're going to give you our book, The Vision Guided Life, as our way of saying a big thank you for helping us spread the message of the gospel. God bless you. Now, let's continue our message. We're talking about time and seasons. And we're also talking about time is opportunity, yes. right? So we see that there's an interplay between these two. In the fact that how you use your time determines how you approach your seasons. How you use your time uh, uh, determines how you look at opportunities. Yes. And one of the principles of time that we touched on uh, is that time is elusive. Time is not stagnant. You don't have all the time to do everything all the time. Time is running out. Therefore, time is our greatest what competitor. competitor. Yes. And so when we see it that way, we're going to take time seriously, more seriously. And I think when uh, Moses wrote that prayer in Psalm 90, he had that in mind, yes. that we have a limited amount of time. Yes. So God, I don't want to waste my life. Yes. Because when you think about it this way, what you do, you, you and I are part of something much greater than ourselves. Yes. And if we realize that, that... I don't live for myself. There are yes. other people depending yes. on me. Yes. There are other people whose destiny depends on me fulfilling yes. mine. Absolutely. And when I understand that, the prayer that Moses prayed, teach us to number our days. Mm -hmm. Teach us yes. that we may apply our hearts to, to wisdom. wisdom. So which means when a heart, my life is applied, wisdom is applied to my life, not only will God be pleased, mm. not only will I make impact, I'll be able to even transfer over to, to other generations. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. And therefore, it gives you a totally different view of time. When you see time from this perspective. And now, let's even open our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter. In fact, I want to read from chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. I think we went, went further, but I want to come back to it. And in summation, it says there's a time for everything. A time, I'm just going to, for the sake of time, <laughs> for the sake of time, 
a time for everything mm -hmm. under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to build, and a time to tear yeah. apart. Yeah. All throughout Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it mm. talks about there's a time for, for this everything and, and yes. time for this, a time for that, a time for this, a time for that. Well, there's a time, as it says, a time to be born and a time to die. So sometimes we look at death as something to fear, right? Death could be used more of a, as a motivator. A good motivator. A yes. good motivator to make our lives more meaningful in terms of use of our time. And therefore, we look at it from that perspective, knowing that the Bible says that, in fact, that very passage, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, says that eternity, God has put eternity in our hearts. Heart. It's so interesting, in a chapter dealing with time, it injects eternity, which means the most important thing we can do with our time, first of all, is to settle the issue of eternity. Of, of eternity. Yes. Once we set that in motion, then it gives a better perspective on what we do with our time. It's interesting also in Genesis chapter 1, when God said he created the earth, he said, let there be light, and he said this, that, and the other. And each time he made something, he said it was good. He made an assessment, it was good. So God himself took inventory, because it says day one, day two, day three, up to yeah. day six, right? God saw that it was good. So even the master, and we always like to say that, we have to teach the God side first, then the, man, then the side. man side. Why? When you understand that this is not something that man has made up, it's how God has designed things to be. How does God treat time? The God who lives in eternity, how does he treat time? He set time in motion. Therefore, we have to have a perspective of how God does things and be better stewards of our gifts, talents, and abilities. So my question is, how can we be better stewards? How can we better How stewards? We I think by, that? It starts by, first of all, understanding that in the time in which you live, in that time lies your purpose. Repeat, said it, repeat that again. I in think. the time that you're born into, that period of time that you're born into, in that period uh, 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 contains your purpose. The Bible talks about in Acts chapter 17 that we've been given an allotted period, period of time. Of time which means that we can't say, I wish I was born. Maybe we could say, or maybe we could wish, but it's not a reality, That's that true. we're born in a certain other time. No, that we are accurate for the time that we're born into, if we look at it from God's point of view. Therefore, instead of being wishing about another time, we should be excited about the time in which we live in, because in this time lies our purpose. I'm sure people in other generations thought, you know what? I wish I lived in an earlier time, generation. but those same people in that time, they're people that made impact yes. in that generation. So yes. we should be excited about the times in which we live in. Yes. It's interesting. There's a scripture uh, that says that there were the sons of Isaac, Issachar yes. that knew what Israel, Israel ought, to, ought do. to do. So yes. I want to ask you in terms of discernment of how to, uh, what part, how do you connect that scripture in terms yes. of time, being able to discern. Discerning what to do means, obviously, you, it has a, it first of all, it starts with taking inventory. You have to settle the issue of purpose. What is purpose? Why I'm here? The reason for a thing. If that is not settled, then it's a waste of time. Because we said earlier, some time ago, that if you don't know purpose and you're still trying to fetch to find your purpose, once you now found it, then yeah, you've a lost a lot of time. Wasted. A lot of time yes. has been wasted yes. if you have not solved that issue of purpose. So first thing I would say is find your purpose in God, the, the purpose that God reveals to you, and then begin to walk in it. And that's how you can kind of focus your, uh, your energies, your, your motivation towards that purpose. But as long as it's not, purpose is not defined, and this is what we also say, when purpose is not known, a person either becomes complacent, complacent. about life or they so chase after healthy an unhealthy obsession. obsession. Yes, and it's very crucial because we've also discussed when talking about purpose that you don't create your purpose, no. you discover you it. You discover it, yes. You watch it, you don't create your purpose, you discover it. Very important you understand that purpose is not something you just uh, think up. Just like a car doesn't think up its, its purpose, the manufacturers predetermine what the purpose is. So if you want to know how that car ought to operate, what do you do? You consult the manual. Because if you don't follow the manufacturer's instruction, you can, you can misuse and abuse and destroy that, that vehicle. And so in the same way, we abuse our lives if we don't follow the prescription of our Creator. If we try to create our own purpose or pursue our purpose in places that 
don't give us the answer, what do we end up doing? We do what we've talked about in the yes. past, that there are four voices that testify about every one of us on this planet. Mm. The voice of God, Satan, man, and the voice of self. Yes. The voice you and I embrace becomes our own. Absolutely. So we have to accurately come back to our creator. It yes. starts with him, the Absolutely. creator of time, yes. to get our purpose question settled. Settled once and So forward. once we've settled the question of purpose, and then we talked in another program before, that's where the vision comes in. Comes in, yes. And vision is God's redemptive revelation. revelation. We've also said that vision sees the potential of, of purpose. purpose. Yes. So that, those things go hand in hand. Hand in hand, absolutely. And, and I'll even add one more, the identity question. Mm. All those three, so vision, identity, identity purpose. and purpose. Yes. If those questions are not settled, you will struggle in life. Struggle in life. So once you understand who you are in God, mm. understand his purpose for putting you on this planet, and you have his vision for your life, it makes a tremendous, it makes a tremendous impact on your life and how you use your time. And I quickly have a scripture that yes. backs up what we're talking about, season and time. It says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. It says, be prepared in season and out, out of, season. of season. The Greek word there for season, kairos. Yes. Out of season, a kairos. kairos. So yes. be, be prepared when whether the time is opportunity, the opportunity is favorable or not. Or not favorable. So in other words, we could say be, be prepared all of the time. That's like, what it's saying. Like you said before, yes. what we do daily yes. determines what we become, become permanently. permanently. So if we're prepared along yes. the way, yes. it helps us to ultimately Absolutely. be prepared for the seasons that come into Absolutely. our lives. Absolutely. I want to thank you for tuning into the Vision Guided Life, and I'm trusting that you received a word that in the days to come will make a tremendous impact in your life. Like we usually say, transformation, transformation takes, takes place through, through identification, identification with, with Christ. Christ. God bless you. Thank you. We want to thank all our partners for your prayers and financial support. We also want to extend this invitation to those of you watching who want to become vision partners to help us take this message around the world. To become a vision partner, call toll-free 1-844-334-2197 or visit visionforlifeministries.org. With each passing day, depression, struggle, and pain keep you from seeing God's best in life. Destiny is clouded, purpose a mystery, and low self-esteem a present reality. And one thing is certain, time moves on. As the sun rises and the alarm sounds, you wake up facing another day with despair a stronghold, strength depleted, and relationship troubles choking the life out of you. What you need today are real answers. You need to see yourself the way God sees you. As part of today's powerful offer, Kay and Olu want you to have the DVD of today's show and receive the book, Uncovering the Hidden Stranger Within, Answering the Question of Identity, all for your generous gift of $25 or more. This powerful collection, the book and DVD, will transform you into a powerful, inspired, and unstoppable force for the kingdom of God. Visit visionforlifeministries.org and order now.